Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. I'm Eddie, your host, and you made it for another week of the Dean Show. And in the studio this week is a man with a lot of experience. He's in town, and we want to talk to him. We want to pick his brain. We want to discuss family life. Many of us have families, thinking about having families, and we want to be able to keep them together. While many families are breaking apart, we want to give some advice so we can keep those families that maybe are on the verge of breaking apart, we can keep them together and give some advice for those that are going good where they cannot and how they cannot go wrong. So when we come back, we got a surprise for you in the Dean Show studio. I'll reveal that when we come back here on the Dean Show. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. Thank you. See, I wanted to keep the surprise. Sheikh Muhammad Said Udli. Is Thank that right? You. Yes, MSA. Now, you're one of the first here in, in the Americas. No, you've been here for a long time. How long have you been an imam in, in the United States? What, 40, 50 years? No, not <laughs> yet. Not. I'm close to 40 plus. But 40 been... plus years. But I've been 33 years now, yes. uh, approximately, yeah. doing the same work, alhamdulillah. And the surprise that not only doing the same work, I've been the imam in my location, the last location since 1980. 1980. The imam and the director of the Islamic Center of Columbia, South Carolina. Well, it's a pleasure. It's been a long time. You mm -hmm. were, we haven't had you on a Dean show for quite some time. It's a pleasure to have you back. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's my pleasure also. Now, you know we cater to a lot of non-Muslims. Mm, okay. And that's our audience. We're broadcasting out of Chicago and people tune in. And before we want to break some ice. Do you mind? And I know you, 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 you're a laid-back gentleman, Imam Sheikh. So for the not-yet-Muslims that tune in and they see the beard and they say, you know what? They just watch Fox News and they turn to us and say, that's the guy. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> not me. They might hook you up with somebody it's from okay. Afghanistan or it's Bin fine. Laden, this, that, and the other. What do you got to say? It's fine. I'm a Muslim, and I'm proud to be a Muslim. And this is part of the way how a Muslim is supposed to look. All right? Maybe some of it is recommended. Some of them is must, like growing the beard. It's part of our deen. I'm not embarrassed to say I'm a Muslim, and I have the honor to grow my beard, to try to imitate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm wearing a kufi, wearing a thobe, okay? Does not mean I'm, every Muslim have to wear a thobe, but it's better to distinguish himself to be a piece of da'wah, invitation for others, because if you are in the middle of the airport and you don't know what you get to, you go to a booth and it has something say, information. So when somebody see you in the train, walk in the street, he will know that you are a Muslim, he would be ready to approach you, ask you about Islam, and instead of seeing somebody else with a suit and tie, I'm not saying something wrong with the suit and tie, but he's going to maybe have 5% idea, maybe you are a Muslim. But somebody will see me, they will have 99.9%. .9 this is a Muslim, I can ask him about Islam. Okay, now the non-Muslim... But I'm not Bin Laden. Yeah. <laughs> so now when someone comes up to you and says, you know what? They, they, they come up to you and they see you and they say, you know what, that's a Muslim, I want to come straight to him. And I'm sure you get a lot of not, uh, not yet Muslims, non-Muslims mm -hmm. will come up to you. And this one in particular says, you know what, does your religion teach that you got to have the Jews or Christians accept Islam or you kill them? Okay. Is this what your religion teaches? No, we don't. We have something in Islam called... You could not force anybody to accept the religion. But we are commanded to give da'wah. 
We invite the people, we care for them. Because our deen telling us whosoever dies without accepting wellness of Almighty God and the finality of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he will be among the dwellers of hellfire. So when I'm giving them da'wah, talking to them, communicating to them, dialoguing with them, is because I have love for them, I care for them, and I want mercy and blessing to happen to them. Now, if you were living during the time of Jesus, Jesus, peace be upon peace him, be upon who we believe Allah was Allah. one of the mightiest messengers of God. Is this correct? Yes, sir. So now, if, it, if we were living during his reign, his prophethood, mm -hmm. did you have to accept him as the messenger of, of God course. and the oneness of God? Otherwise, you're going to be in some deep trouble. Exactly, exactly. Is it the same thing? Of course, the same thing about who's the prophet Musa, prophet Ibrahim. You have to submit yourself to the will of God. That means accept Almighty the Creator as the only deity to worship and to accept and acknowledge the messenger that he sent that is there for you. Okay, so with that said now... But denying the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, since he already came, denying the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, means denying Jesus also and denying Moses. And denying Jesus and Moses as you deny the Creator. Mm -hmm. Is a choice that he sent Allah the Prophet. So you deny him, that means you deny the command of God. So if we say we don't believe in Jesus, if we don't love and revere Jesus, then we're not Muslim. No, we are not Muslim. This is a fact. But we believe in Jesus as a prophet of Almighty God, as a messenger of Almighty God, not as a son of God, not a part of God, not equal to God, not the third of three. This is, yes, we believe in Jesus, messenger of Allah, Prophet of Allah, born from the Virgin Mary, okay, that he has no father, he has a mother, that he's a sign, a miracle, that God Almighty sent him and revealed to him. This is our belief about Jesus. We love him and we believe in the second coming of Jesus. This is amazing. This is another topic in and of itself, but we want to get into okay. the main topic, family life. Okay. We want to talk about what I had mentioned earlier in the show that, you know, Many, it's a, it's a high statistic. People are mm -hmm. getting married to get divorced. People are getting married, and you know what? They're having a hard time keeping the marriage together. Mm -hmm. So in general, what advice would you give for the husband and wife to be able to work? Because you have a lot of experience. I'm sure in the 40-plus years, you've had a lot of sit-downs with couples. Is this right? Of course. Yeah, so what's like the number almost, one problem? Almost, what's the almost every what, day. What's the no almost every day. Yes. What's the number one problem that people come to you to complain, husband or wife? Ah, it's different types of problems, but you see, first of all, before I discuss this issue about problems and family life and things like this, there is a quotation that some Muslims believe that to be a saint of the Prophet, and it's very important to clarify this to the listeners, especially the Muslims. In the al-halali Allah talaq the most hateful thing to Allah, which is lawful, is the divorce. This is not a quotation or a statement of the Prophet Does not mean we say Islam teach you or encourage you to divorce your wife, but attaching this statement to the Prophet, this is not correct. This is something I would like to start with. Okay. And I think that we... If Why, we is, it, is this not authentic or is this something... It's not authentic. Okay. No, it's not authentic. Okay? But Islam doesn't forbid divorce. And at the same time, Islam doesn't encourage divorce. So we are not saying, regardless whatever happened between and the husband, even if they're about to shoot each other in the head. I don't know. Sometimes they shoot in the head. Sometimes they... This is, this is all over the news. You hear like crazy we things. We hear, going. okay, but it's not... Islam say no, when it comes to this, you understand? It's better that everybody go to his way and even depart in the good way, in good way. So Islam allows divorce if there is a need for divorce. But the statement is not correct. But let's go to the problem. The problem starts with, why are you going to marry this woman? Who are you already choosing this man? Let, let's hold off right there. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with the answer to this question here on the Dean Show. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world and most of the converts are women, not men. They see that the rules of Islam, instead of constraining them, the rules set them free. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. 
Okay, you've got your dream home and you've got your dream car, but you're going to get old and things are going to happen to you in your life. And then what have you got? At the end of the day, it's an empty dream that has no real foundation. We are going to die and we're going to meet our Lord and He is going to judge us. It becomes an obligation for each single human being to find out what the Quran is. Islam is telling us to stay away from things which are bad for your person and bad for the society. Islam prohibits killing of innocent human beings. Human life is precious. Back here on the Dean Show with Imam Sheikh Muhammad Said Adli. So before we left off, you talked about a common quotation that's attributed to the last and final messenger, peace be upon him. You said this is not authentic. Yes. How about the one that says that the, the throne of Allah shakes at the happening of divorce? This is not authentic. And we shouldn't, you understand, adding things to the deen or lie again is the Prophet وسلم, to stop a problem. Okay? But how, how, if someone because says this is a crime itself. But, you talk about Allah and his messenger with something they didn't say. Yeah. But now if someone says, well, how do you know it's not authentic? How does somebody verify that now what you're saying is correct? Because there is a way to authenticate any statement said by the Prophet Sallallahu mm -hmm. It have a science, it have a way of study. They have a scholar, they spend same thing like somebody giving you gold or silver and you could not yourself know if it's gold or silver. Yeah. So you take it to people who specialize in this field. They examine it, they make some experiments and tell you, According to the testing in the lab, this shows that this is gold, but is 19 carats. This is 22 carats, like this. Yeah. So the same thing in hadith. There is people who specialize, and a student of knowledge like myself, you understand, we go and utter what is the scholar saying. Mm -hmm. This is not my speciality, but I, at least I have the tools that I can go, open the books and search who said authentic or not authentic. And these people are not making their own idea. They make a study, they make a test, and to understand is this been narrated authentic from the Prophet Sallallahu or is there a break in the chain of Isnad, the communication. I told you, you told him, you told her, she told him, he heard from the Prophet. So are, the, are these weak or are these totally not authentic or fabricated? They are not. The first one about Abad al-Halal ilallah is not authentic. About the throne of Almighty Allah is shaken is fabricated. Okay. Okay, so let's continue on. And people can go verify this and check this. And of course. Okay, so now tell us now, what's the number one complaint that you get from people who come to see you in your office? Okay, but the people always have their complaint. But what I'm saying is the problem starts from day one. When you get, when you're planning to get into a relationship with a woman or a woman getting in a relationship with a man to be a husband, to be a wife, what is... What is the, the main thing you like about this man or this woman that you want to marry? Because when we did not come, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, what the meaning is, a man seeks marriage from a woman for one of these reasons, okay? That a man seeks marriage from a woman because one of this quality, her beauty, mm -hmm. her wealth, her uh, family uh, uh, lineage. lineage, okay, or because her belief, her religion. So the prophets say, marry a woman because her religion. Otherwise, you'll be a loser. So you start in a building with no solid foundation because is the deen, is the religion, is the teaching of Quran and the authentic sunnah is what is going to be the solution to our problems. But if you marry a, one, a man because he's handsome or because you understand he rich or a woman because this and that, these things comes and goes. So when you try to apply the medicine to it, which is the teaching of Islam, you are not ready to take this medicine. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have some kind of uh, uh, what you call uh, allergy against it. Mm -hmm. You could not take this medicine. Yes. So we need to establish something in the beginning why I'm going to marry this woman or why is this woman going to marry this man? So once we acknowledge, okay, let's say that the person married someone who is a righteous person. They live by the total complete submission and mm -hmm. surrender, mm -hmm. acquiring peace from the one God, okay. the Creator, Islam. And they live by the Quran, which is the verbatim word of God, and the 
authentic teachings of the last and final messenger, his sunnah, so, the hadith, mm -hmm. peace be upon him. So now, these people who did that, and now they're still might having some issues. Okay, because with, the human being. Now you're having, getting two people with different uh, habits, with different ideas, with different views, and you want to both, both of them together, not for a couple of hours. They're going to be day and night. In, fa in each other face. Yeah. So we have to grow in understanding the personality of each other. We need to learn how to accommodate each other. And this is a problem sometimes, they understand that in the family, okay, the man wants to be the leader, he wants to be the, the chief, he wants, this is fine, he has his right, okay? But he doesn't know how to be a man, how to be a boss, how to manage things. And the woman also wants to maybe grab the same steering wheel and to be the one who run the, the issues. In the Islam there is something called consultation. I don't have to go by what my wife is saying, but can at least ask her opinion what she thinks about it. And we are not going to discuss things about, I'm going to pray uh, Zohar afternoon prayer, four rak'at or three rak'at. We don't make consultation about it. But if you want to understand to, to go out for outing, you and your wife and the children, and instead of, okay, this where we're going to this weekend, can we consult? Can we discuss it as example? Maybe she has a, 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 another uh, uh, preference, you understand, or some other idea. She would like to go to the zoo instead of the park, as example. So we have to learn how to manage, how to understand the other, uh, the other person, to be in the other person's shoe. This one of the problems that we don't know how to accommodate each other. Communication is key? It, of course, okay? Consultation and communication. Now, consultation between each other, but if it excels, let's say that they're not seeing eye to eye. Okay. Mother-in-laws, father-in-law, should they take it to their families? Will this bring more harm or good when, the say, the wife... She starts to okay. come... Mother-in-law and father-in-law, because you want to take it to your mother. Your mother loves you more than her. Yeah. This is nature, okay? She takes it to her mother. Her mother loves her baby more than you. So everybody, their interest in, in their child. So they are not going to bring. So even the Islam teaching us this. When it comes about it's going to be a clash and divorce, and all this methodology is not working, Allah said, bring a person from her family as representative and a person from his family and they sit down in a family gathering discussing the problem you see but i could not be always calling my mother and she's calling her mother and everybody getting a different view they need to sit in a family gathering and they try to listen and they try to see what is the best for the family this is what it has to be so we have to sometimes, but also I don't see that this is a solution unless that everything else didn't work. Why we could not so this sit is the, down? This is, we, the, this is the last like final straw? Exactly. Okay. So why a husband and wife could not sit down and talk to each other first? Why they could not be patient with one another and listen? The problem in the sense that we don't want to listen. Mm -hmm. And this brings a, a serious problem. So sometimes it is a matter of lending an ear to your partner and for some reason some people they don't want to do it out of arrogancy out of uh, feeling i'm too good but look the prophet وسلم, we have to always see how the prophet وسلم, was so patient and he was uh, trying to solve the problem as example the hadith is saying what the meaning is never the prophet وسلم, been given a choice between two matters this or that you want to eat on the chicken or you want to eat beef? You want to go to the zoo or you want to go to the park? As, as long as it's not halal and haram. So the Prophet used to what? Use the easier. So let it go. Where, hey, honey, where you would like to go this weekend? No, I don't like uh, red lobster. What do you like? I like seafood. Okay, it's not a big deal. All right? But clashing comes out of nothing. Why? Because we don't know how to let it go sometimes or how to discuss things, or try to see what, as long as not something haram. Try to compromise. 
And if you try to compromise to make your wife happy, believe me, she will see it, even if she did not see it. Later on, when she got to sleep, next day, she would think about it. And maybe she tried to compete with you next time, she will try to compromise for you for the next time. So we have to know how, how to, to play this uh, uh, role of being uh, involved as one team. We are one team. One team. Exactly. Okay, one team. Let's let, take a break and we'll come okay. back. One team here on The Dean Show. There will always be someone that will be there to say something negative. But at the same time, there will be someone there to say something positive also. So just hold on to the rope of Allah. Everything in this universe rely and need Allah. The Quran says don't kill women, don't kill children, don't kill the old people, don't attack the civilians. This is what the Prophet Muhammad told us. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said that the Prophet sallam, never ever start a war against anybody. And if we're going to worship something, I figured I might as well worship the Creator instead of any of the creations. Now, in, upon investigating all the religions, I remember finding out the meaning of what Islam is, what a Muslim is. Those who surrender their self to God is a Muslim. Those who surrender, submit to God, God's will. That is it. Islam was pure. It was just, you just pray to God, your Creator. Back here on the Dean Show, we're talking about one team under one roof, one family. Exactly. And we want to keep the families together. So they got roles to play. Can you briefly tell us what's the man's role, the woman's role? Because sometimes these roles get mixed up. Okay. First of all, we have to understand why we get married. Okay. And we have to understand that we have a goal. We are trying to create a new unit to worship Allah. So our marriage is a means towards a higher goal. And we have to learn how to sacrifice to reach our goal. People come from overseas to America to learn English and depart from their families and all these things because they have a goal. We have a higher goal to please Allah, to go to Jannah. So, and it's going to be obstacles, it's going to be problems, but we have to learn how to sacrifice, how to be patient. So our goal is pleasing Allah, Raising a Muslim family, how I be as a husband protection for my wife and my wife be protection for me. Not only for economic reason only, okay? But we have to be a means, my wife is a means for me to, to help me to lower my gaze, to protect my private parts, okay? And I am also the same for her, you see? So you scratch my back, I scratch your back. You're going to protect me, I'm going to shield you. So this is one thing. And also we're going to be a leader to lead little kids, okay, or little children, to raise them as Muslims, to do the right thing and to stay away from what's forbidden. This is something have to be also exist in our mind. And always because of goal, we're going to make a sacrifice. If we are not going to learn this, we are not going to be, we, we are one team. What is the role of the man and a woman? It's simple. You have a basket or a bucket has two ears, okay? You have a box. You carry from this side, I carry from this side. Otherwise, if I carry it by myself, I'm going to break my back. I'm going to hurt my muscles. So now you carry from one side, she carry from one side. So now there is two things needs to be done here. Somebody, he have to earn the dollar to bring food, income to the house. And somebody have to keep the house running and watch the children. So now let's split. Let's split the responsibility. And of course, by nature, by all means, Allah made the man suitable to go outside to search for the dollar and to suffer and hard all this. The same thing Allah made a woman with a gentle and kind heart and have more patience to deal with the children and how to make the place as a paradise and heaven for her husband. So her job is not more important than mine, neither my job is more important than her. Both of us try to serve to, be, to have one team. We have one umbrella, we have one tent, and all of us are going to be under it. Okay? So both of us have to be like one hand washes the other. One, Is it? one, just like there's only one guy. Of, of course. We it has to be one team. You could, not, you could not have two people drive in one car. Okay? Yeah. You're going to drive. I'm going to be the passenger, or I'm going to be the best. you're going to drive, you choose. Mm -hmm. And since I already take the course 
of going to understand how to drive, I'm going to drive. God Almighty, Allah, our Creator, gave me the responsibility and said, الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم. So Allah designed you for a certain job and Allah designed her for a certain job. We're going to accept the choice of Allah or we're going to make our own choice. So listening and adhering to the command of Allah is something very important. And it's going to be obstacles and ups and downs, but we have to work on it. Mm. Sit down, talk, give each other ear, you understand? Try to consider the other person, try to have their feeling, see what they complain. Try to consider, you see, this is something very important. Try to listen to your partner, always try to listen to your partner. Try to give them excuse why they did this. Give them another excuse. Try to forgive. There is many things that we can talk about it. How to keep this? We don't want to split it. We don't want to cut it off. We don't want to disperse the unit. We want to keep it always until you're going to die or she's going to die and both of us are going to meet again in Jannah, inshallah. Thank you for the incredible great advice. Oh, thank you. Thank you, inshallah. We look forward to having you back again on the Zisha. Of course. Show. Thank you. God willing, inshallah. And some great advice communicate, work together to keep the family together under one roof, one family, worshiping the one God. And this is what Islam is really focusing on all of us to do, to form a relationship with the one creator who created this whole universe and everything in it, and to come together, man and woman, as a family, husband and wife, working together, collaborating together in goodness, so they can have righteous children, and those children can go out and contribute make a righteous society. We look forward to having you back here with us here on The Dean Show. Do not forget to pick up The Dean Show DVDs and share this message of peace, peace acquired by submitting yourself entirely to the one God, Islam. Share this message. You can get our DVDs at uh, dvdfordawa.com. You can copy them, give them out to the non-Muslims, and don't forget to visit us here every week on The Dean Show. Until then, Next time, peace be unto you.